Welcome to Reconnect. I'm Diana Palm. I'm the medium helping you heal the grief from heartbreak and loss. Today, we're going to be talking about how you can find inspired life changes after loss. This is such an important topic because so many of the bereaved actually get lost in the void after lose somebody, losing somebody significant in their lives. So when you're moving through that space and you're reorganizing your life and you're grieving, how do you find a new life path that's inspired? Um, and often I like to tell people to take that time. I mean, that time is necessary. There's a lot of sifting through belongings. There's a lot of shuffling around paperwork and paperwork and bills and income and life changes, structural life changes. Many people have to move and sell their home. And so there's all sorts of things that you do need to go through and those take time. But when you're ready to reassess what you've been building in your life and you're ready to create the life moving forward that you'll be stepping into, this is where you need to really tune in for your inspired life changes after your loss. So I've written down a few things here that can really help you. And I just noticed I'm sitting way too close. So I want to back up a little. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, I, I do like to talk about immediately after experiencing a significant loss that there is a sacred solo time. And this is when you are doing that recalibration, the reassessing, the reorganizing, redistributing of items, property, and all of that. So this is kind of a time when you will be open and receptive to new ideas coming in. You'll be making space for new energies to come into your life. And you'll be able to start to rethink about your life up until that point and kind of go back to what was important to you before this relationship, during the relationship, and what will be important to you moving forward. Because there'll be some real nuggets of gold that you can take with you from the entire experience that will really feel authentic for you and meaningful you for you, <laughs> meaningful for you as you move forward. Okay, so let's see. Now, one of the things I like to talk about is your trajectory of life has changed. Um, and when you're assessing the life that you were, you were creating a life with the person you, you loved and lost, but also, so you're, you're going through two different things, right? To resolve and heal the energy. One is the energy of the life force you were creating. And one is the loss of the person that died. So this is the one that creates the sacred solo time. And then you reassess here on the life that you were creating together. Now, this could be any kind of family member or significant other that's in your life. So before the relationship started, before that person was in your life, you were on a trajectory in your life. You knew what was important to you. Maybe you had career goals. You're going to school. You knew what kind of family or friends, friendships you wanted. And you're on a certain pathway. And then there's a merging that comes together. And then you're on this pathway together. And when this significant person passes, their journey ends at that spot in your life. Um, although they stay with you, but they are, their physical journey ends. Now, your life doesn't have to remain on the path you were creating together. Yours actually gets a veering off point. And you get to actually grow, grow new legs and new experiences that come from the culmination of all the experiences that you had together and before that relationship. So that's really important to know and to remember is that I see a lot of the bereaved actually trying to complete the mission they had with their partner who passed. You know, they're like, oh, for 10 years we've been talking about this and moving our finances in this way and making plans. And so they die and I'm going to continue to make all these things work. But what they don't realize is that particular dream has shifted. That particular dream may have ended because their partner is no longer there. So that's the reassess point. You need to go, does this still feel authentic for me moving forward? Does it still feel like something that I want to invest my time and energy in? Because that's the pivotal point. That's the point when new dreams take off, when new legs get get uh, birthed, where new pathways expand into new adventures. And I like to just, you know, encourage you to stay open to these changes because we've already put a lot of time and energy into the one path you are sharing. 
And it's a natural segue when there's a death because it gives you that time to reorganize your own personal thoughts about it. We don't always have to reach an end goal with somebody. We don't have to complete a mission that we planned with somebody. When, when the death happens, when the loss happens, we get to actually recalibrate and understand that sometimes that journey, that, that dream, the plan, and all the time and energy and investment that went into that, that's okay because it prepared you for something that's coming up next. So you don't have to complete that particular journey. You can actually branch off and create a new one and it's not wasted time. It will be uh, redirecting your mind. You may have to shift some beliefs around it, shift some finances around, but it's, it's a, a juncture where you can have some more freedom to use the energy, the motivation, the lessons learned, the investments made, all of that stuff to create brand new legs of your personal journey. And as you redirect into those new areas, you're going to find that you come into alignment with brand new people. And then when you merge with them, you'll begin starting a new life plan together. So this is your, your redirect point. This is an opening for you to make those inspired life changes. I'd like to think of a few things here. Um, assess if the life path you were on before your loss is still what you want moving forward. That's the first thing you need to ask yourself. And you can actually write it down. Like, where did that idea come from? Was that my idea that my partner got on board with? Or did I get on board with his idea? Or did we dream it together and start creating it? And it really doesn't matter. At this juncture, you can say, is it still authentic for me to pursue? Does it still feel like it lights me up and it fulfills me and inspires me? Because when you don't have your partner to complete that journey with, you may want to be redirected at that point. You may dream another dream. So reassess that. Um, there's a couple of things that, that get involved when you're, when you're making that life plan with somebody. One is we influence each other. You know, maybe I have a particular dream of what I want in my life and a partner has a certain dream of what, what they want in their life. And as we come together, we begin to merge those. That's entirely normal. And what you wanna do after a loss is create enough space around you where you're available for that to come in again. You're available for a new merging, but you'll have to withdraw your own pieces out of the previous dream so that you have something to merge with. So you don't want to continue the dream and hold it so tightly that there's no space for somebody else to come in and merge with you because you can never recreate what you had with a new person. It's just impossible. It would not honor the new partner or yourself. That particular dream has also died in a way. So like I said, it's your loved one who passed and the life you were creating that has passed. Those are two different things that you'll be experiencing as you're healing your grief. Okay, we also, we share goals with our partners. Um, sometimes we help our partners reach their goals. Sometimes they help us reach our goals. Um, but it's important to get back in alignment with your goals. Now that there's this shift and change in your life, it is time to go, wow, maybe I, I reached, you know, this certain age and all my goals have changed. Or maybe I shot too, sh you know, I took a shot, but I, I didn't shoot high enough. Maybe I want to take more bold risks and chances in my life. So we always want to have that ability to reflect and see where we're at, what we achieved, and what do we dream of next? Um, even though loss is challenging on so many levels to go through, it's also a motivating factor and it it's re inspires your life force energy. It affirms your life, your, your contribution to your life experience. What do you wanna be known for? What do you wanna experience next? What pleases you? So take all of those things into consideration. Now, we also have um, spiritual contracts to help each other and reach certain milestones. So you may have noticed like if your life was on a certain trajectory and you came into relationship with a partner, they may have been your cheerleader, they may have inspired you, motivated you, or maybe it was the opposite. Maybe they were really difficult in leaving them inspired you. Whatever that situation was, it was a spiritual contract. So when you know that and you know that everything is in alignment moving you forward, 
you are now in an opening because you're finding yourself alone where you can kind of reflect back and go, okay, I had some difficult partners that did this. I had some loving supportive partners that did this, but ultimately I'm still on my path, right? So you want to always make sure that you know how to move forward regardless of what's going on around you or who those players are that are either supporting you or motivating you through difficulty. So coming back to center and just taking that space and time to tune in and really knowing what it is you would like to do next. Separate from being with other people. <laughs> okay. Um, you don't always reach your final outcome as planned, but it still moves us along our path. And I love this one because, you know, sometimes we come together and, and our dreams are to, you know, go get educated, this, get this particular job, um, get into this organization, buy this kind of a house, go on these kind of vacations, buy this kind of a boat. And then all of a sudden our partner dies and we're like, oh my God, everything's up in the air. I might lose this. I might lose that. Are these things still important? It's never a waste of time, okay? So even if you experience loss of your, your uh, placement in the life you've created, like I said, that's another loss because that life, that dream is also past. That dream has died. So in that, you're going to, you know, experience a, another significant loss, your placement, your identity, um, all these things that you put time and energy into creating. This has a unique energy in your life. But what I want you to focus on is not the loss or the recalibration or the resorting of this energy. What I want you to think about is the love you poured into it, the time you poured into it, the energy you poured into it, the dreams you had around it, because all of those things, they're energetic and tangible that you can reclaim and use for your next dream. So that one brought you to a certain point and because it was unfinished or unfulfilled, it didn't reach its fullest potential, you can use all those energies to pour into something else you wanna create. Now you have the experience, you have the know-how, you have the um, energy to create, you know you can, you know how to pour love into a new thing. All of these are life skills. And this energy that you created here can easily be moved into your next venture. So don't worry about the time and energy and money that has already brought you to a next higher level and everything that you create moving forward is going to be higher than that. So all of those things continue to move you forward in your life and continue to move you towards a new dream fulfillment. Okay, and the last one is um, look for those veer off points that segue to something new and you can align with clarity. So if you're constantly living the same kind of life and doing the same things, oh, this is my favorite restaurant, so I'm gonna go there every night, <laughs> or I'm gonna go do this job or hang out with these friends, you might miss a lot of new opportunities that are coming to you. So it's important at this time to open up that space in your life to start new things, to um, connect with new people, go to different restaurants, do different activities, all of those things can help you create new veer off points. And you might notice it comes quite naturally. It might be something that's out of your control. There may be a change in your job coming down that you did not foresee, that you did not expect. And some people feel like, oh, I'm already emotionally overwhelmed. How am I gonna handle this now? It's happening at the same time. This is a positive, even though it is hitting you at a point when you're emotionally vulnerable and you may not have a lot of energy to recalibrate and get on top of it right away. The first thing you need to know is it's happening to create that veer off point. It's happening at the same time because it's divine time for these changes to occur. There's really no better time to make big life changes than as you're moving through grief because this is already a motivating factor. This is already creating a new opening and a new timeline for you to jump into. So if those things happen to you, try not to think about, about it as taking on more than you can handle. Try to um, recalibrate your thinking around it, reassess your energy about it, and, and, and uh, refocus how you're going to allow it to create a big, huge, wide opening for you to veer off into a new path. And that's always gonna just bring you more into alignment, more into your authenticity, 
and more of your own inner well-being and fulfillment. Um, let's see. Okay, when you're going through these um, losses, you know, we talk about it, that the loss you experience may shake you to your core and make you reconsider your life. And that's a, that's a blessing and that's a takeaway. It's never, the blessing isn't about losing somebody, of course, but we are all going to lose somebody. So if when you're going through it, it seems like you're going through it alone because maybe the, you're the only one suffering and grieving at that particular time, but every single one of us will go through it. Um, and we'll go through it multiple times. We'll lose everybody we love because we're here to be born, live and die. Nobody's gonna escape that. So that's the one thing we all have in common is this sense of we had a dream, we had a person, and now we don't. And we have to get the mojo to get back up on our feet, recalibrate, heal, and then, and then get our inspired life path moving forward. Our ability to adapt and do that is so much um, hinging on our ability to heal and our ability to release the past that we loved, our beloved life, our partnerships, our friendships, the things we found great value in, but then our ability to also move forward. We don't need to let those things that we love tie us to the past. We can bring all those energies forward with us too. Um, and it's really important that you don't judge yourself as you're making changes, you know, especially if you have a friend group and they're like, well, I thought you always wanted to do this, or I thought we we're going to do this together after retirement or whatever, whatever moving pieces are around. You can change your mind at any time. You have free will. So it's important not to um, receive other people's projections on you. And it's also important not to judge yourself for making a different choice. Again, you have free will. That means you're not anchored into any one particular choice at any time. You have the freedom to make a new choice. And if you need to hear that from somebody, I'm giving you permission right now, you can choose whatever you want to without judgment. You're not obligated to stay in the circle of people, even if they were amazingly supportive to you as you grieved, even if the family and friends gathered around you and they helped you and, and you're so thankful and you're so grateful for everything that they did for you as you moved through this experience and then you get onto your new life trajectory, sometimes I see people prevent themselves from continuing to move forward. They wanna stay stuck because they found this love and support in this particular family or friend group, right? But they have served you and you have served them. You fulfilled something in them because they were able to give to you and they fulfilled something super deep and meaningful for you by helping you have the space to heal your heart and nurture you through that experience. And trust me, you can give it back to them when they're grieving or somebody else will. That's something that's just good karma all around. But you do not have to obligate yourself to stay in someone else's dream and stay in someone else's space just because those ties were so deep. Just take it with the love that it was given. Take it as the gift that it was meant to be and allow yourself to continue your journey. That's a really important thing to know because it's so easy to stay where... Um, other people want you to be, especially if they've been kind, loving, and giving to you. But there's no shortage in the universe. There's no lack of kind, loving, and giving people. Once you free yourself, you'll understand that you just had this wonderful experience. If you take those energies with you, you'll automatically attract more of the same. So it's not about lack. It's not about leaving that behind for something worse. It's about leaving to move forward with that energy and those connections and the gratitude and the appreciation, right? And then you're moving out with that energy and just automatically magnetizing others to you in the exact same beautiful energy. So don't be afraid to leave people behind if you feel called to move forward. Um, and the best way to support someone who is going through the grieving process is to support their sudden and spontaneous inspirations when their life changes. So if you're one of those clusters of people that's been nurturing and loving and supporting somebody who's been going through the grief process, you know, maybe you're a close family or friend and the person you've been supporting suddenly gets that sudden inspired thing, like something reignited in them to make them move forward and want to move forward, the very best thing you can do is support them in that. 
free them, release them, let them move forward without feeling guilt. Don't tell them they have to come back. Don't tell them how much you'll miss them, even though you will. I mean, you can say that, you know, you'll miss them, but you want them to be happy. Free them, free them. Give them your energy and allow them to move forward in pursuit of their next dream. So sometimes we have to realize that when we're loving and supporting people, we can hold them really tight, but we want to be able to release them. We want them to move out of this experience and get the inner resiliency to move forward in life again and to be brave and 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 repurpose their lives, repurpose their themselves within their lives. So support your loved one in moving forward. Encourage them. Give them strength and confidence. Tell them that you believe in them, even if you think their idea is cuckoo. You know, you might be a real stable person. You haven't changed your job in 20 years and all of a sudden you have a friend that's in the same vein and they lose somebody and all of a sudden, boom, they want to buy a new car. They want to get a makeover. They want to move across country. Maybe they want to move to a different country. And you're thinking, oh no, that sounds just crazy. I need them to come back and be stable with me and, and like continue this life, right? No, if you love them and that you see that they're getting inspired by new ideas coming to them and new, new um, inspirations and desires for themselves in life, support them, encourage them. They've just come back alive again something ignited within them and they really need to follow that and they might be afraid to lose you if they do. So encourage them to do it, free them, release them. That's what you can do as support staff around your grieving family and friend, okay? Um, don't stand in their way. <laughs> um, and also, you know, this is just a good sign they're coming into alignment with themselves and also it's really life affirming. The last thing you want somebody to do is get stuck in the void of grief. So when they have that inspiration, that is reigniting the flame within them to continue living with enthusiasm and joy and excitement there. It's a very life affirming thing. You won't have to worry about them not making it when you see that happen. Even if their ideas seem crazy to you, let them, let them go for it. They're feeling the motivation they may have never felt before and you may not identify that in them. It might scare you. You might not think your friendship can withstand it. That's okay. Don't think about any of those thoughts. Just encourage it because they have been lit up. They have been inspired. So that's what you guys need to do when you're when you're supporting them. So some of the things that can look like are like drastic life changes as jobs. Maybe they quit their job. Maybe they completely change their career path. Maybe they were in a corporate job here and all of a sudden they go into you know, Native American drumming and they get super into drums or maybe they just start being an adventure. Maybe they get into Reiki or, or spiritualism. Maybe all these, you know, French sciences, the psychic sciences, maybe that calls to them. Maybe they just become really active and get really involved in some hobby that they never showed any interest in before. Whatever it is, just expect that that is one of the ways that it can show up. They also might move houses or move across the state, move across to a different country, restyle their hair and clothes. Um, they can totally recreate their image. Uh, they wanna make new friends and um, they might even change views about their life. You know, you, your relationship with them may have included a lot of conversations about politics, um, spirituality, the way you raise families, your thoughts and ideas about relationship. And all of a sudden, when this loved one goes through a major loss, this change that sparks within them may have them reassessing the way that they were living their life, their thoughts and ideas about love and relationship, their thoughts and ideas about politics. Some of those conversations may need to be taken off the table because your friend is changing. Your loved one is growing. They're creating new belief systems. And you don't want to hold them back into those previous conversations because it doesn't do them justice. They're at a big, like I said, a veering off point where they're, they're growing significantly. So to support that for them is to, you know, you can either continue to have conversations and witness their growth and have conversations about that. Sometimes opposing views creates more expansion, especially with those and growing views 
relationship that can be supportive and loving as, as you're hearing one another out. Um, and sometimes you might find that it's like, wow, we don't have anything in common before. So I'll just take the appreciation that I have for the years we spent together as they were developing and then freed themselves for their next, next experience. Because you too will continue to attract people where you're vibrating. And we must honor that. We must be able to free people. So um, I hope you got some wonderful takeaways today, finding your own inspired life path after loss um, is really important. And it's a significant part of you healing your grief and also affirming your life. You matter and what you do here in life matters. Your life is not over because you lost somebody significant. So take the advice in this video and see what kind of nuggets you can get out of it to have your veer off point. Allow yourself to make some big changes. If you get inspired, if you wake up with a dream, if something just catches your fancy, uh, pursue it. Give yourself permission to go after it and um, release yourself from other obligations that have brought you to this point so that you can move into the next space in your life. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for being here. Let me know down in the comments if you learned something in this video and if you need help moving through this experience, moving through your sacred sacred transition after lose some, losing somebody, be sure that you check out Reconnect, my number one spiritual grief healing program. That's at www.dianapalm.com. And if you'd like to book a call to see if my program is a good fit for you, I have all the links below this video. Okay, you guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you being here and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.